people at your girl Adiola. Guys, Nigerian election is not even until February of next year. But guess what? The primaries and the dramas have already started. We're about to talk about that today. And can I just say real quick that when I look at a lot of the candidates that are running for president in Nigeria, it breaks my heart. Have you guys noticed? Because Nigeria is a country of really smart people. Like for real, we are smart. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, we are not electing smart people into office. A lot of these people have criminal records. Some of them even have pending court cases for embezzling money. And before we move on, before we move forward, did you guys see that video? Please, what in the world is happening here? Did he just wait? 200, Um, is that supposed to be an election? Anyway, let's come back to the dramas at the primary. First of all, my very own father, former governor Peter Obi, defected at the very last minute from PDP to Labour Party. I was like, what? What do you guys think he knew Atiku would get the PDP ticket? Because the rest of us knew. Atiku has been trying to be president since 1993. He contested that time in 1993 and lost the primaries to uh, MKO Abiola. This is the sixth time that Atiku is running. There was no way he was going to step down for anybody at the primaries. So moving to another party increased Peter Obi's chances of running for president. Um, what is it? What happened? Oh, you don't mean it. He won. <laughs> Peter Obi already won the primaries for the Labour Party. You see, it was a very calculative move. Uncle Peter Obi is a calculative somebody. Congratulations, Ojade, Uncle Peter Obi. Meanwhile, guys, instead of delegates to vote for whoever is competent, whoever is qualified to represent their party as the presidential candidate in this coming election, guess what? They keep voting for whoever gives them more money. Hmm. You guys know my father, Don Yoko, Uncle Don Yoko, he's a regular on this show. He's now Peter Obise, campaign manager, Ben. So the man said in an interview that during the PDP primaries, anybody that wants to be president will give the delegates between ten to twenty thousand dollars. Well, you know the process has always been monetized, but you know it has gotten to the level of absurdity. If a presidential aspirant must make provision for up to $20,000 for each delegate, about 4,000 delegates, for him to win primaries. Is, is that really what we want in Nigeria? <laughs> Father, up to $20,000 each for delegates. Can you imagine? For those that are not Nigerians, before we have the general election in February, the delegates of each party would vote to decide who would represent their party as their presidential candidate. So in a way, these delegates are literally the ones determining the destiny of Nigerians because it is whoever they decide will represent their party that Nigerians will have as option to vote for. Can you imagine? Although, let's not get ahead of ourselves, PDP doesn't have 4,000 delegates like my father said they actually have 774 delegates accredited to vote you know so I'm not sure why he said 4,000 but assuming that each one of them let's even assume they got $10,000 instead of 20,000 like he said from popular candidates like Atiku Wike Bukola Saraki that would be $30,000 per candidate and there were 774 delegates how much is that in dollars my people that would be 23.2 Million dollars. Hey, father, father. That is 9.6 billion. Jesus, in one night. And these same candidates have already paid $100,000. That is 40 million naira for the nomination for more. Where are these people getting this kind of money? They literally give out dollar notes. Dollar, you see, when you talk about dollar ring, <laughs> millions of dollars were buried into people's pockets that night during the PDP convention. And the same thing will happen during the APC convention. By the way, did you not? that EFCC invaded the PDP convention, they were checking people said Ghana must go back. I don't mind that they went, but would they also show up during the APC convention is what I want to know. Why is it always one-sided? Eh? Because we are watching everything on Plasma TV and we already know 
that they will also be dollaring during the APC convention. Anyways, back to what we were saying. That was how they were spending money. Anyhow, to buy delegates' votes that night just so they can be the party's a candidate for the election. But at the end of it all, you guys will not believe that some people only got one vote. How? In fact, some people did not get any vote at all. Can you imagine how? <laughs> and then they said 12 votes were voided. On what basis were they voided? How come those votes don't count? 12 votes, if I told you not, it could make a huge difference. Can you guys imagine that my father, former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshi, did not get, not, not even one vote. My name again is Ayo Dele Peter the Rock. Oh, I'm in pain. I am having a lot of pain, but I prefer to bear this pain because of you. Ah, Governor Fayoshi, how could they do you like this? Fayoshi, oh, got me, oh, got me, oh, got me, hey! Fayoshi, oh, got me, 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 oh, got me. The reason that I love Governor Fayoshi and the reason he's my father is that the man doesn't hold grudges. He just puts everything in, in God's word, in God's hands. The Lord will fight this battle. Amen, amen. See, thank you very much, my brother. But guys, I really need to let you know that, you know, I felt as if someone poured cold water on my face when I saw Brother Bukola's vote. Ah, he paid me. Brother Bukola Saraki, because the man was supposed to give us free health care in Nigeria. Not before he's been talking about how we will have free health care across Nigeria. But he only got what? 70, 70 votes. Ah, Brother Bukola. Share our rights. Mong Badra, Fuyinluri, okay. I'm praying for you on the mountain of wonders. Now, as for my father, Governor Wike. <laughs> I'm going to take this power from, from APC back to PDP. Why are you getting ahead of me? Did anybody ask you? What I was actually trying to say is that PDP, the, the only president. aspirant today, as far as PDP is concerned, that can confront APC, that can face APC and win the election is me. My friend, will you shut up? Not you, Jare, my father. Why are you interrupting me now? Please, let this be the last time that you interrupt me. I think Just you should congratulate me. Not yet. No, because you no, 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 no. <laughs> Nobody will win me in this election. Lila, don't come, don't come back, girl. Don't come back today. Come, let's finish shooting and then you can disappear. Okay, I'm really sorry guys. Whether Kolodowo likes it or not, Governor Wiki actually tried. Ah, the man has my respect. He got 237 votes. I think he tried though. But you know what I wanted to talk about before this one started is a scan scan? Was the money that the man spent. Did you guys see Governor Wiki's campaign vehicles? Can you see this? Can you see this, guys? We're not joking. Wiki is going to be the next president of Nigeria guys we are ready ah baba unkanse owo oni ru owo oni yo is this how we waste money in nigeria enough vehicles to serve an entire motor park somebody that has not won the primary so is spending this much money on their vehicles again is this the money meant to develop river state reverse people is this how your governor is doing you just imagine for a second if those vehicles were ambulances do you know how many lives will be saved Jay. Jay, Jay, help us, help us. There is God. There is God. God, 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 It's like our priorities are upside down. There is God in everything we are doing. Thank you, former first lady, Madam Precious Jonathan. There is God in everything that we are doing. Meanwhile, I like to give kudos to my very own uncle for not compromising to win this election. You know, you guys know I have just one uncle. That is Uncle Dele Mamod. It takes a strong man and a strong woman to get this far in this race because of the dollar rate, a lot of people have already absconded, but I am still standing. Uncle Dele, in case you are watching, I appreciate you. You know, after the primaries, even though he got zero votes, this is what he wrote on Instagram. He said, a child of diversity who paid for nothing 
and got nothing in return. But he gained more friendship, love, integrity, reputation, experience, and exposure. You know, I really admired the fact that he could say, he could beat his chest that I didn't pay for any delegates to vote for me. Yes, he didn't get anybody to vote for him. But it's, it's, it's also very sad because, he, and I'm not campaigning for Uncle Daily Mode, by the way, you know, all of them, they are my uncles. But it breaks my heart because this is a, a reflection of what our society has become. I feel like Nigerian politics has gotten to the point where even if you have good intentions and people know that you can do the job, if you are not willing to bribe people, then they won't even consider you at all. I'm really worried by how we've commercialized even the right to run for office in Nigeria. Look at the number of votes. Is it based on competence to you? I'm just asking you. Do you think these numbers are based on competence? I mean, take a look now. You think, ah, uh -uh. Not just the primaries, even the general election. You will see money will still rain. So, as expected, Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has been declared the winner of the PDP primaries. So while we're waiting for APC to hold their own primaries on the 6th and 7th, you know that they postponed it just because they are the ones in power. I'm happy to know that PDP and APC will not be the only dominant party in this coming election. Amen, somebody, finally. Uh -uh. We needed a thought for us a long time ago. And I'm glad that there are speculations that other parties may also join the Labour Party now that they have uh, Peter Obi as their candidates. We don't know whether or not they would. But at least I'm glad to know that it's not just going to be APC and PDP. Meanwhile, while APC is preparing for their primary, I personally think that it's very important for us all to pray together for my very own uncle, Uncle Bodaya Yabilo, ahead of the APC primary, just for him to get at least one vote. I mean, anybody agrees with me? Because the way things are going, seeing people with one vote and zero vote from PDP, I'm getting worried for my uncle. So I think as a community, the Adela community, <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, I think we should join us together and, and pray for Uncle, uncle Bodaya ahead of that election. The man is sure that he will be the next um, Nigerian president, by the way. So let me know what you guys think. Um, so personally, I think I will start fasting for my uncle. Let me know if you guys are willing to join me in prayers. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Ghana, guys. Actually, this is also happening in Uganda. Partly because of the ongoing war in Ukraine, the price of grains has skyrocketed. Russia and Ukraine together account for nearly one third of global wheat supplies. So while Ukraine is also a major exporter of corn, barley, sunflower oil, and so on and so forth. And so that's why prices are going up. So the governments of Ghana and Uganda have now banned the export of grains and other farm produce, imposing high taxes in order to prevent food exports to neighboring countries. They want their own people to have the grains. So in Ghana, for example, farmers are not allowed to export maize, rice, soybeans, and so on and so forth. And the government wants this to run until September of this year, 2022. So the government is saying that they are doing this in order to ensure food security in the country and increase local poultry and livestock production. But the problem with this is that some farmers in Ghana, for example, are not happy with the ban because they apparently get better prices when they sell their crops outside of Ghana. In fact, some of them are going ahead anyways, selling to people in other countries, defying the government's order because they get more money. The main reason emerging is that the importers of the grains, especially from Nigeria, are offering better prices and better payment terms, while the local traders are offering to buy at cheaper prices and also to buy on credit. I knew it. It is those Nigerians. Nigerians are offering better money to these Ghanaians and they are not taking it on credit, you know. Anyway, unfortunately, the government of Ghana is not supporting the farmer as they would have loved to. Needless to say, they want the government to lift this ban. So, what do you guys think? Should these farmers export grains or not? I mean, if you are one of them, what would you do? At the same time, though, you cannot really blame the government because the government is trying to make sure that there's plenty of food for the the people but the farmers are getting more money when they export the grains so what can the government do better if they want the farmers to comply what do you guys think about this story let me know in the comment section you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real Moving on to Senegal, guys. 
So this is a very sad story. Um, last week, 11 newborn babies died in a fire outbreak at a regional hospital. The fire was caused by a short circuit and the fire spread quickly within five minutes. Only three babies were saved. But guys, honestly, it, it's so hard for me to talk about this story because I, I find it hard, you know, trying to imagine newborn babies getting burnt alive. I mean, they're so helpless. Babies in incubators, you know. The health ministry said the blaze which gutted the neonatal department of Mame Abdwaziz Dabak Hospital in the west of the country led to the tragedy. A preliminary investigation said a short circuit was to blame. And of course, people are upset across the country. And I think one of the reasons that people are upset is that a similar thing happened last year as well. There was also a fire outbreak at another hospital in Senegal and four newborn babies got burnt and died. You know, the reporter mentioned something that I think we should pay attention to, and it's the fact that so many of our underfunded hospitals in Africa are stretched beyond capacity. So what I don't understand is why healthcare is not a priority to us. You know, government officials in Africa, they are able to fly abroad for treatment, so healthcare has not been a priority to them, and I don't think it will. But I feel like we, the people, also don't seem to think of how we can be the solution. You know, I believe that you don't have to be wealthy to start caring or start making a difference. If you do something with the little that you have, I'm of the belief that God will always ensure that you have more so that you can touch more lives. This is why I'm always inspired by the story of 30-year-old Sadio Mane, a Senegalese professional footballer who plays as a winger for the Premier League club Liverpool and the Senegal national team. You know, when this man became successful, he didn't forget where he came from. The name of his village is Bambali in Senegal. So among other things that he has done, at the age of 30, Sadio has built a hospital in his village. He's not just catering for the people of his village, by the way, but also the neighboring villages. He's saving lives. He talked in an interview about how his father died because there was no hospital in his village. His father died of stomach ache. They took him to a healer, not the hospital, but then he died. Sadio Mane is an amazing footballer, but above all, he's an exceptional human being. He's completely transformed Bombali school with bigger classrooms and upgraded teaching facilities. And just around the corner, he's erected a much needed new hospital. He did this because of a tragic event from his own past. But the moment he became successful, the first thing he did was to build a hospital in his village. He just didn't want other people to die like his father died. And so he's saving lives in his village and neighboring villages. But he didn't stop there. He has also built schools in his village. He spent $350,000 on the schools and he spent $693,000, almost $700,000 on the hospital. Now, the reason I'm telling you about how much he spent on the schools, on the hospital, is because in Nigeria, for example, we have politicians and musicians who own Ferraris and Bugattis. And please, I'm not saying that having Ferraris or Bugatti is wrong and I know that musicians for example work hard for their money but what I'm trying to say is people who have that kind of money can also change lives they can change many lives but many of them are not doing that the sad thing is when people show off a fleet of expensive cars especially our politicians what do we do we celebrate them the funny thing is, people were making fun of this same player, Sadio Mane, in 2020. You probably saw the picture that time when they saw him carrying a phone with cracked screen. People were making fun of him on the internet. Did you guys see his response to that? In an interview by Tele Dakar, he actually responded to that. Let me read his response. He said, why would I want 10 Ferraris? or 20 diamond watches and two jet planes. I prefer to build schools and give poor people food or clothing. I have built schools, a stadium. I didn't even know he built a stadium. I provided clothes, shoes, and food for people in extreme poverty. I give 70 euros per month to all people from a very poor Senegalese region in order to contribute to their family's economy. I prefer that my people receive a little of what life has given me. 
wow, what has life given you? And how are you giving back? Have you ever thought about putting resources together with, you know, your friends that are also successful and seeing what you can do for your community? You know, his story is also a reminder not to judge people by the kind of car that they drive, the kind of phone that they use, or how they dress. You just never know how some people are touching lives. We're really, really grateful for Sadio and for the kids that we lost in Senegal. May their souls rest in peace. Our sincere condolences to their parents and their loved ones. Hopefully we can do better. Even when accidents happen, even when there are fire outbreaks, our neonatal centers, the place where the babies are should be better equipped. You know, adults can run but babies cannot run. African governments need to do better in general because so many of our hospitals are underfunded and ill-equipped. You guys know that much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.